Ever since I started reviewing games for this channel, I've found that above all other genres, the one I struggle with most are open world RPGs, which is unfortunate for me because that's 80% of big budget games nowadays. And the reason I struggle can be put into two separate categories. First is the amount of content that goes into a big sprawling open world RPG. Where should I even start? With the story or the gameplay? the world building, or the progression systems, music or performance. And the second reason is because more often than not, it does not matter where I start. How was the story in Far Cry 6? Bland and forgettable, like most Ubisoft games. What was the gameplay like in Skyrim? The same as every other Elder Scrolls and Fallout, with a few new additions. Does the game run well? Well, it's a massive open world the publishers squeezed out in under two years, so no. None of that matters in today's chosen video game, because Piranha Byte's 2017 open world offering, Elix, does absolutely nothing different. Instead, with a modest budget, it simply attempts to provide a solid, classic styled adventure, with a strong focus on an interconnected storyline. Saying and doing are two different things, however. So can Elix stand tall with the RPG Titans? Or should Piranha Bytes really have rethought that sequel? As immediate impressions go, I'm rather fond of Elixes, introducing us to the world and lore with an almost Witcher 3-esque opening cinematic was more than enough to whet my appetite and tickle my taint. But don't get excited too early. This game is no The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition. There's not a single character anywhere near as hot as Triss or Geralt in the Bath to be found in Elix's overly clothed world. There is, however, a tried and tested trope that all RPGs worth their salt adhere to. You spend the majority of the early portion of the game killing rats. And during this early section, the first thing I noticed about Elix was its jank. It can get pretty rough around the edges, not in a game-breaking way or even in a funny way, mostly just in a blurry textured laggy kind of way. Even so, I'd be a liar if I said I hadn't expected a certain level of ruggedness from a lower budget RPG. The second thing I noticed is this game's kind of fucking hard. Not impossibly though, you will need to pay particular attention if you want to work out the game's mechanics and if you don't get mauled to death by a big rat thing. Luckily for me, and the people that struggle to pay attention, akin to a lot of RPGs, you're often provided with a way to talk yourself out of the more tense situations. This is very romantic. Fuck off. I just want to interrupt the video very quickly to say that Play It is a small channel, and as such, making regular content can be very difficult for us. So if you like what we're doing, or just feel in a charitable mood, if you could leave a like, comment, watch more of our content, or even subscribe to the channel, that would mean the world to us. Anyway, back to me with the video. Throughout Elix, you'll be doing all your speaking through this blank slate of a man. I think his name is... Jax? I can't remember. Regardless, that's not really important. What is important is the clever way the game sets you up to take over and embody this meaty dude, even if it is a little vague. You basically start off as a member of a drug-taking, tech-crazed cult of super soldiers. That's where the titular Elix comes in. And when you fail an unknown mission, you're kicked out and very quickly go cold turkey, leaving you ready to explore and discover the world with your newly found free will. Which means it makes perfect sense when your character starts throwing out questions left and right. They're realising who they are at the same time you do. On that note, this world you're exploring is filled, and I mean filled, with an ungodly amount of dialogue. Elix could very easily turn a lot of people off based solely on the sheer amount of long-winded social interaction alone. Just shut the fuck up. Furthering that commitment to Elix's characters, there's so much detail and engaging interchange given to the majority of the NPCs. 
it can quite often get hard to tell who's a one-off side character and who's intrinsically tied to the main quest and side missions, which is completely a good thing. It does so much in helping the world feel fresh and alive. That also said, the game didn't seem too occupied with penalising me for skipping over a lot of the talking when I decided I wanted it to end. The attention to detail doesn't end with the dialogue either. So many little touches, like finding the night guards asleep during the day, go a long way to ensuring the world feels lived in. I know it seriously doesn't sound like a big deal, but so many open world games get lazy with subtle world building. It's teeny features similar to this that make games like The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition and Kingdom Come Deliverance a joy to traverse. Beyond all that, I only really have two other negatives worth getting riled up about. The audio mix is totally fucked. Luckily, unlike some games, you can sort that out yourself. Slightly more annoyingly though, is the lack of a sell all junk button. Why are all these games obsessed with wasting my free time? Just take all my junk, please! If you've been disappointed by the severe lack of any significant Dragon Age content since 2014, this might possibly be the best stand-in. Conversely, if you're fond of closely budgeted similar titles like Risen, Greedfall or the Gothic series, two of which Pride of Bites are directly responsible for, you'll likely find a lot to love in Elix Tim. You're comparing us to those inhuman creatures? Thanks for watching this video guys. Have you dipped your toes into Elix's massive behemoth of an open world? Are you interested in its sequel, the devilishly clever titled Elix Tim. Let us know any and all the thoughts you currently have swimming through your mind in the comments. Also, if you have the time to leave a like or even subscribe, that would really help us out. And if you want to financially support us, you can do so through our Patreon, the link is in the description. Honestly though, any and all forms of support mean the absolute world to us. Thanks again for watching, and cheers.